right, so it's another season, different season, coming upon us. Not turkey, but the infamous deer season. Everybody's been chomping at the bit, seeing all the Facebook posts and everything. Everybody uh, feeding the, the fuel to the fire, getting excited for these deers coming up. So we're coming at you from in Beaufort County, North Carolina. I'm gonna be heading out to a farm that I've been. I did some turkey hunting this last spring. wasn't unsuccessful turkey hunting, actually. Um, did, I mean, saw birds on the game cameras and everything, um, and saw Tom about 200 yards out, which is gonna be totally ineffective with a shotgun using a turkey choke. But hey, it happens that you know all the time. It's nobody's perfect. Um, so we're gonna give a shot out of deer season. So I've already been out a couple times, got some cameras pre-posted and, and everything. Also set up a, uh, a 15 foot two man tree stand ladder. Um, so we're going out today, kind of check on the piles, check any pictures and stuff. It's been about a week since I've been out there last to check it. Um, but as the cameras have been set up for about two weeks now. And then for some, it's probably like, well, why are you checking them so soon? Well, I got a late late start getting stuff and pre-set up and everything for patterning deer this year. Um, reason being, active duty military has gone this, mostly this summer for uh, at Cadet Summer Katrina at Fort Knox. So um, I'm back now. I'm trying to get caught up with, with everybody else. Hopefully, uh, everything isn't too too early nowadays. It seems like it's hard to judge. Been a hot summer. I'm dreading for for a warmer fall, but I mean we'll see when we get there what what happens and everything. So we're just kind of cruising along here, taking some back roads out. Um, so we'll we'll see what what we run into when we get out there. Hopefully we see something that's maybe hit up on the on the pile out there, the food pile that we got established out there and everything. So. Hopefully get some luck, maybe some hits, maybe not. But yeah, we're also going to be tri trimming some limbs for the for the tree climber. So we'll be up in two separate spots and get my wife out there to get hunting and, and everything. Uh, and so she'll be set up in the, in the 15 footer two man tree stand. Maybe get some video of, of just her solo hunt. Well, not solo hunt, but on her own. We'll get some maybe some footage of that and everything. So and we'll go from there. Um, so we'll come back to you here in a minute. When uh, we get out to the site. down the road we'll get a little bit closer we're probably about maybe a mile maybe just under a mile left to where we're going to um, again real quick using equipment Mara step is one of the tree stands I have the uh, two-man tree step $98 from Walmart inexpensive so you don't have to spend a whole lot of money on a tree stand um, I'm also using a uh, I have with me today in the back of the truck is uh, my tree climber from API the Crusader $199 from Bass Pro Shop. Um, camo that I use when I go hunting. I love real tree camo. It's awesome. Whether if it's real tree green or real tree extra, it's real tree. It's going to work. Um, I've had no issues with it. We get up to where we're going. We'll kind of talk about some other stuff that I've been prepping and utilizing, you know, and that's, that I use for the prep work prior to the hunt and everything up to the hunt so and all through bow season and you know and, and gun season and stuff like that so we're well, sure enough get back to you give thanks to the to the people that one that i'm using the equipment with and that's been helping me out regardless whether if i've harvested an animal or not it's just getting out there and enjoying what not everybody gets to enjoy or is or has ever experienced so it's just taking that you know, not. I think people take it for granted, and not enjoying those 
and just because you don't get nothing doesn't mean it's a successful night. You successfully got outdoors. You, you maintained active. You've learned something, whether from trial and error, um, and successes and failures, whether if you harvest an animal or not. It's just getting outdoors, gaining that experience, which makes it worthwhile. And all the prep work that goes into it. And then when you do all that prep work and you're able to harvest an animal, there's just that much more pride in that you have from it and you're able to put food on that table for your family to enjoy well there's nothing better than than that so that's the biggest goal from from all this hunt and everything is being able to get that food on the table and just a reward of it. it's kind of going back to those roots a little bit some people understand some people don't hey it's okay so we all enjoy it but again special thanks Mary Step. Um, API, Realtree, got a bunch of others. I kind of dabble a little bit in a lot of different things of equipment and gear that I use when I hunt. So, I mean, it's all worthwhile. So, big thank you out to those companies that I, I go and buy their products because I read all the reviews on them and get all great feedback and I want to use it because I get excited and pumped and ready for the season. So, we'll get a little bit closer and I'll come right back to you. More than 21,000 jobs in Colorado's small towns and rural communities are supported by hunters and fishermen. In fact, the money from hunting and fishing not only creates jobs, it also protects our wildlife and the places they live. So go ahead, hug a hunter. To learn more, visit hugahunter.com. All right, we've pulled in. To the left, you can kind of see the, all the, the farmland and the back of plants right now that's been planted and some other stuff that's coming on up here. So we're going to cruise up here and kind of scope it out and pre-look pre before we start tearing up in there just to see if we see anything. Kind of moving around because we don't want to come in and start scaring anything off and off. see right now but I'll show you later once we get out where one of the food piles is at just making sure you ain't nothing feeding up here I don't want to disturb or or bother or anything if there's something a deer out there or something we kind of want I want to leave it alone just so it and I can come back another day and check because it actually is it's, only, it's 90 degrees right now but believe it or not we got a good little decent cloud coverage it's nice and shady so Last times I've been out here, it's been pretty hot and humid. And matter of time, it starts feeling like you're coming out of that shower. So I mean, it is what it is. We see some out here. We'll just come back another day and check. I'm not. I don't want to disturb anything. No honk foul. Nothing done. So I don't want to bust up anything that I may have already get started. So try to get these deer moving anyways to these food piles and start getting them in so we can kind of see what we have out here so we're just gonna kind of cruise our way up tall grass out here and tall plants I'm not sure what they have planted out here I'm not a big on a farm I've talked to the, the farmer and Carl in a while since I was gone most of the summer so I'm playing catch up so uh, we'll, one of these days I'll get, get a chance to get some feedback from him of what's been going on out here with, with some of the wildlife and everything and where he may have seen some, whether deer or whatever coming around or, or even coyotes, which may be a big issue out here running the deer off and stuff. So we'll check later today at the Resource Commission office to get a looking at getting maybe a coyote permit started getting it going and everything or get one purchased so we can maybe come out here during dusk one night or right before the evening and take out a coyote or two or see if we can catch them out here roaming around and 
trying to get our deer back. So got a little bit of wait, not too much longer. We'll start peeking in the field where I have one of the tree stands set up in the back, try to overlook it. So we're getting a little closer. A lot of overgrowth out here and everything, so. I was filming this all on a GoPro Hero 4, the silver edition. So far, so good. The video's been working. Been nice. Special thanks out to GoPro. Alright, so just coming around this corner. It's nice and shady back there, which is a big plus. So maybe. Maybe see something out here. talk about really quick some of the stuff I'm using with pre stuff that I'm kind of use before I go out there and check everything um, so coarse scent killer gold 99% 10 day after drying awesome stuff works really well used it this last spring for turkey season very effective um, some ambush buck bomb some wind indicator by HS and also we're gonna hang a couple couple uh, pre-staged bow hangers and stuff. One's the uh, e, the easy hanger from Realtree and then another one from HME products and then also of course my bag is from Timberhawk. I got some other things in here but we can talk about a little later. Um, so let's, let's do this. quiet out here still kind of warm which is a good thing because that means I'm not going to be jumping nothing out here big plus but we'll come out here and check the food pile we get kind of close we're probably about halfway already walking so it's not that bad of a walk I just go a little faster out than what we're going to be taking going in hunting so But hey, we gotta get exercise somehow. All right. This is the first site we're going to is where the uh, the Ameristep tree stand is at. So, the two man tree stand. It might be a day we'll get my wife up in this one and I'll sit with her. Hopefully she can harvest deer while we're out here but we're actually coming up we're probably about 50 yards from where the tree stand is at now maybe less we'll just have to cross the lawn here after all the, the rain we had the last few days gotta fill up the little creek here so we get to jump it all right, so there's a tree stand right there. Again, Mary's Step, two-man one, not eight dollars from Walmart. And then right over there is the the food plot. So let's get across this thing. One way or another, 
might have to come check over here first. A little easier. Actually, I got an easy. We don't have to jump. We'll just go around the long way. It looks like we may have had something eaten out here. Unless the rangers beat the stuff down. Which I'm probably guessing. So, I'm going to assume right now the rain has kind of washed what I have out here for a corn pile. I'll take a look. I'm on the trail cam. So we set up a mock scrape area right here. Got a magnum dripper on there with scrape gold. That's what we're using. Alright, we're gonna go up here and do the tree stand first. Climb up here real quick. We're gonna put in put in some stuff. Some hooks, so Ameristep's new Team Realtree Buckbuster Ladder Stand. Discover the quality, the innovation. The new Team Realtree Buckbuster Ladder Blind is no doubt the best on the market. Unique ultra hide slim ladder design. Adjustable armrest accommodates both bow and rifle hunters. Complete concealment system with camo stealth strips and a three-part magnetic camo skirt system for the complete hunting package. Ameristep, raising the level of quality and performance. So we get the hook set up, put up the uh, HME product hooks. It's a good placement, kind of out of the way. Not in the field of view, but you can still access your equipment once it's hanging. So, probably did a little food pile that we're probably maybe about 12, 13 yards from, from up here. Um, this is the view. After that corner where that bare area is, that light brown colored dirt. It's about 40 yards, so still doable with the bow. Maybe pushing it for some bow hunters, especially with us, because we're still pretty brand new. But this is kind of what we're overlooking. So I'm gonna go ahead and jump down. When I jump, calm down, and uh, no. Also, another special thanks to Halo that we're using for a laser rangefinder. So, it's been a huge, huge asset and tool. We'll get down and check the camera, which the cameras are all Moultrie. We'll be using a uh, Wild Games Innovation uh, card checker to check check the camera, see if there's anything on there. So, we'll be back soon. All right, so we're back down on the ground. Again, using this is the Moultrie A5. Kind of works, works perfectly inexpensive, just for my needs. I'm using the uh, Wild Game Innovations card checker. I don't know if you can see it there. I just put the card in now, so we're going to scroll through you, see if we see anything on there. We'll flip the camera here in a minute. All right. This is kind of a little bit difficult to see, but. Doesn't look like anything new on here from then the last time I was out here, so you won't be flip flopping cards anytime. So story of my life. Oh well. It's still early. We'll go ahead and pop this card out. What we might do is mix up the uh, the feed we have out here real quick, and right before we walk out, now where we can 
to stir it up and make it good enough for the deer to eat, so we'll be back. The Moultrie A5 game camera makes scouting easy, providing quick setup and great features. This camera was built for the hunter on a budget, but don't let the affordable price of this game camera fool you. It's loaded with features guaranteed to make your job as a wildlife manager easier. The 5 megapixel A5 features a low glow infrared flash with a night range of up to 50 feet. Clear images and videos are captured both day and night. The A5 is extremely easy to set up so you can spend more time scouting and less time playing with camera settings. Moon phase, time, date and camera ID are stamped on every image to aid in game tracking. Picture delays can be set to 1, 5, 10 or 30 minutes. Packed in a weather-resistant case with a rugged bark finish, the A5 blends into its surroundings. This camera has an SD memory card slot that holds up to a 32 gigabyte card. Operating on four C cells, the A5 captures over 8,000 images on one set of batteries. Extend battery life in the field with Moultrie's camera power panel or camera battery box. The A5 includes a mounting strap and integrated mounting loops are compatible with a Python security cable for extra protection in the woods. Scouting made easy, Moultrie's A5 provides easy setup and great features at a price that makes it affordable to outfit your entire property. So, you see him sweating? I've already been doing cutting, got the client API. Outdoors, Crusader up and the tree getting ready to get in it and climb up. So we're gonna clear the branches, not too many. Give us a good shooting lane. Get enough high enough to be able to overlook all this area here. And stuff. I'm trying to leave a lot of the stuff maybe like natural. Because there's natural cut trails that are coming in and out of here. And you can see like in some spots, some wide, wide out areas where it looks like they've been bedding down the grass. It's kind of interlocked on itself and stuff. So, no idea what's been bedding down there. I'm pretty sure it's hopefully it's deer. <laughs> and then uh, we'll go from there. So I'm going to climb up a little bit. And once I get some spots cleared out and stuff, we'll, uh, I'll get the view from up there and show everybody what I'm going to be looking at. Thanks. See you soon. Alright. Made it up to a adequate height not too high not too low about that middle I would say probably about maybe 20 15 between 15 and 20 feet up in the air you can see sweat like a stuffed hog this is how humid right now it is in North Carolina as you see this white peak this time of day they come out and do us work you can see all the limbs I pre-cut down. I got my uh, real tree easy hanger up, so I'm gonna use that. I'm gonna leave it up here because I'm gonna use that as my marker. So when it gets a little bit dark, I know exactly where I need to climb to. And you see, I'm safety harnessed in with the harness. I did come with my API Outdoors Crusader climber tree stand. Um, it's comfortable. I mean, it's. I didn't buy any aftermarket one just because of cost and stuff, so why buy one when they already came with one at this point? Um, I mean, it's not uncomfortable, but I know they're, all the aftermarket ones are a little bit more comfortable, so. But this is the view I have from up in this spot, so it's a good range. I can see anything that's coming up from that field there. And I'm concealed a little bit by these trees, so it'll take them a minute for me to see me, so. I left some of these branches up. I'm going to go ahead and use the uh, Halo Range Fire to that food plot down there and range to see where I'm at. So that's exactly about 20 yards from where my uh, food pile is that I put in just across from my Moultrie trail camera, the Moultrie A5. Um, I came out a few weeks ago, you know, initially. Before, uh, before I went left for Fort Knox and dumped just leftover corn that I had. And unfortunately the pile is still there. So now that I've got this area kind of primed and 
and peek out. As you see, I can, I can ingress and egress right through here in multiple stop, spots and coming up through different areas. So if I wanted to, I can come in this backside. But since predominantly I've seen deer back to my right, back in that way, and that field most common, I'm going to avoid coming in that area and just come in on this left where I've started making a small foot trail and then just screw right on in because the woods behind me is is pretty thick. So I'm definitely gonna hear something coming through that stuff if anything so I can just sit still here. Use this higher tree cover, just camouflage so and then of course I'll be pre-treated with the gold scent killer and be good to go. So Whenever I go to the woods, the one thing I never forget to bring is my Realtree Easy Hanger. For me, they're the ultimate tool. They help me hang my bow, hang my backpack, keeps everything nice and organized in my tree stand. They even made it better. They made the screw easier to go into hardwood, such as oaks, walnuts, with no effort whatsoever. We love them. We've used them for years. Hey, can you just shut up now and come up in the tree? I'm working here. I'm trying to hunt here. Realtree Easy Hangers, they will make you more successful. As an avid whitetail hunter, I've been lucky enough to hunt deer all over the country. But regardless of where I'm hunting, one thing is certain. A whitetail's best defense, it's his nose. Studies show that a whitetail can smell a thousand times better than us. So it is critical to take as much precaution as possible before you even enter the woods. This goes for scouting, hunting, and even checking cameras. One of the great things about the Scent Killer Gold with the Hunt Dry technology is the fact that you can spray your clothes down up to weeks before going out hunting. You simply spray them, get them completely soaked, let them dry, and then place them in an airtight bag and when you go out hunting, you will be completely ready. It really makes it nice and easy in the field. You can do it back at your cabin, you can do it before you even go out, and now there's no hassle in trying to spray down. Plus, you still get the great technology and you can stay scent free out in the field. Why not give yourself the edge and do everything possible to keep your scent to a minimum? After all, you may only get one crack at that buck. So give Scent Killer Gold with Hunt Dry Technology a try. Apply it, dry it, and go hunt. All right, so we're, we're done for the day, headed back home. Unfortunately, nothing on the trail caps, but Hey, I got some, some stuff cleared out with some trees for the climber. Some good vantage points and stuff like that. So hopefully once the weather starts cooling off, the deer start moving and kicking around and stuff. So now I got to do it now is just periodically go check corn and just kind of kind of keep the up keep of where the, the food pile is. So try to draw them in the area a little bit, get them to come back. Again, I'm going to have to probably go to the resource center, maybe looking to get a coyote permit and stuff like that. Talking to uh, a gentleman of the... Uh, the land that I hunt on, their friends, because I met through uh, th through that channel and stuff. So, but um, he said they have quite a bit of coyotes out here. So, probably start seeking out and maybe go get that permit so I can be able to um, discuss some coyotes, up, get them from quit running all these deer off, so I can have a successful deer hunt. But that will keep you posted on if that happens and, and everything and and stuff. Thank you everybody for kind of, if you did watch the video, appreciate it. If you want to leave some feedback, some uh, constructive, you know, some comments, something that maybe works for you, maybe I can implement in the, in the type of terrain that I'm working in and stuff like that. Or if you had something that that you see that I might be able to do that, that'll help me have a successful hunt, by all means comment. I'm not too keen on people that just want to shut people down, you know, and, and just write, I guess you could say BS comments and being smart asses because I won't go for that. It, one, it's pretty unprofessional. Two, being an adult about things because uh, this isn't, you know, I'm not in to, to have little kid comments and play these high school games and stuff. So if you're going to leave a comment, just you have to go ahead and just leave uh, your comments and stuff. You know, I appreciate any support that I get and everything. Keep you all posted on the season and stuff, maybe on a few of the hunts. I'm on Facebook Live. I'll do a few a few posts on there and stuff. I may end up having to do a, a separate Facebook just for this one, so because me and my wife share one and stuff. I just don't want a bunch of people just getting randomized and start clodding up the uh, 
on the Facebook page. So I won't tell you, I won't put out my Facebook page just quite yet unless I actually put one out and stuff and do live feeds and everything. But if you get a request for me and it's just made and stuff and it's level like deer season or, or hunting extreme, whatever, I don't know. <laughs> you know, it's, it's gonna be me. So I appreciate watching. Uh, again, uh, thanks for everything you do. I'm an active service member and thank my brother and sisters in arms out there fighting every day that may not get a chance to get out and prep for hunting season and stuff. You know, I, you know, me being active duty, I'm still doing this for my brothers and sisters that just can't get out there and get after it. Thank you all, thank you all for, for your service. All right. I, you know, people thank me all the time, but it's just a pleasure the job and, and doing it and stuff. So, but again, thanks to my brothers and sisters for doing what they do and stuff like that and serving. And uh, anybody also that's been in the past and served. So, thanks again. Hope to talk to you all soon. And uh, so I can get out of here and go cool off a little bit. Not go swim. So, we'll see y'all later.